All right, first world problems. Are those problems that we face here in our world that aren't necessarily faced elsewhere? Back in 1998, Missy and I got married. That's 20 years ago this year. Hard to believe. That's incredible. For me, that's the longest I've ever done anything in my life. Thank God I enjoy it. Thank God she still enjoys it. What am I talking about? Steve and Nina this week will celebrate their 51st anniversary. So while I recognize 20 years is small, for us it's a major, major accomplishment. 20 years ago, we got married, and very soon, or shortly after we got married, we built a home uh, out in the country, a mile away from her parents' house. It was a nice place. Built it from the ground up. We loved it, most of it. We had a couple issues. One of the issues we had is we had this brand new dishwasher that was as loud as could be. The living room, right on the other side of the kitchen, where the TV was, was right next to where the dishwasher was. They shared a wall, so whenever the dishwasher was going, I inevitably turned up the volume on TV until it was screaming. Drove Missy crazy. Two years after we moved in, I break down and I go and buy one of those quiet dishwashers and made my wife very happy. You don't get away with buying appliances for your wife most of the time. I did win that year. That is a first world problem. A loud dishwasher. Third world countries, how loud are their dishwashers? As loud as the children scream. Mm -hmm. First world problem, you go out to eat, you order a Coke and they only have Pepsi. Oh. First world problem. First world problem, have you ever taken uh, uh, the route your GPS tells you to go and you wind up going the long way around or making turns and circles that you don't need to make? First world problems. Frustrating? Yes. First world problem. Do your kids or your grandkids ever, ever move your TV remote and forget to put it back where it belongs and you spend 10 minutes looking for it? I see that shaking. First world problem. Video screens that haven't worked for two weeks. Unfortunately, frustrating, still a first world problem. I left the restaurant the other night while we were on vacation having had a good dinner, but couldn't finish it all, but knew we weren't going straight home. It'd be a little while before we got home and there was no way the food would make it home. And I struggled with, do I just stuff myself or do I sit into the kitchen? First world problem. These are first world problems because there are people in the world who have much less. There are people in the world who struggle with other issues day by day. They don't struggle with the comforts and amenities of life, they struggle with living. They are concerned on how to feed, their, how to feed, how to clothe or provide shelter for their family, for their children. We're gonna to talk today about perspectives. Paul is talking to us today about perspectives. How do we view ourselves, our lives, our world? How should we view our lives, ourselves, and our world? Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, as we open your word to peer into your perspective, illuminate our hearts and our minds to see more clearly your vision, what it is you're trying to tell us, how it is you're trying to shape us, and send us out today different than when we came in. I lift this prayer to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. I like this passage. It is our lectionary passage. We're now back in the lectionary after spending nine months in the story. I hope the story was good for you. I hope you had an opportunity to do some reading, bigger parts, and I hope that's a practice you will continue on with. It helps give us contextual, uh, contextual understanding of, of the passage, but today we're gonna to focus in a little bit more. Second Corinthians chapter four. We're talking about how we believed, and how we spoke, meaning the changes that we go through, the development that we go through in our lives. All of us here today, have at some point in our lives not been here, 
not been where we are today, not have the understanding or the sight that we have today. We developed that and we grew. We also believed, so we also spoke, because we knew that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. Our perspective shifted when we came to that realization that God raised Jesus from the dead, and that by our belief and acceptance of who Jesus is, acceptance of God and his gift through Jesus Christ, that we too will have that life that Jesus was given. We changed our perspective. Our perspective was changed rather. Everything, everything is for your sake, Paul says, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving. This is Paul telling us that we have an obligation, that grace didn't just stop with you or I, we weren't the end goal for God. It wasn't that God said, you know what, I'm going to put together this package, I'm going to put together this opportunity, and it's going to stop with you, with me. Grace, as it extends to more and more people, Paul says, that grace might increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Paul's reminding us of an obligation that we have. But he tells us, don't lose heart. Don't be dismayed. Even though the outer nature is wasting away. How many here understand the outer nature wastes away? Raise your hand. The rest of you are just not getting it or you're just not being honest. I wish I was 21 again physically and the 48 mentally and emotionally. What a glorious life I would have. How many of you wish your body was younger? Now we're being more honest. The outer is wasting away. The inner, though, is being renewed day by day. The inner is renewed day by day. We talked about, and I can pull those pictures out again, about what we feed our bodies and how it affects us. The inner, the soul, has to also be fed so that it can be renewed day by day. And I'm going to tell you, what we discussed for stewardship, what we had in our bulletin for our responsive readings, they were not coordinated with today's lectionary text. There was not that coordination involved. So when we talk about rest and renewal today for our stewardship moment, that was done completely separate of this sermon. And how appropriate that we talk about that. How do we renew? How do we rest? Well, it's not just taking vacation, is it? Day by day, our souls are renewed, if we renew them, if we are willing to be changed. I can remember, first off, in seminary they tell us not to talk about ourselves very much. They warn you about that. Don't talk much about yourself. Make sure you're talking about other people. Well. For the most part, I would agree. However, there are times that I struggle who to talk about. Do I talk about you, or do I shine a spotlight on myself in place of putting, my, putting the spotlight on you, on Perry, for instance? Perry doesn't like me talking about him much. <laughs> so you have to forgive me. I can remember graduating from high school, being in the Marine Corps, and looking back. You ever had a time in your life where you look back at your life, and you looked at what you've done, what you've learned, how you used your time? I can remember looking back and wishing that I spent my time a little bit more differently. I, I wish I'd learned more about a particular subject. I focused in on my Spanish a little bit more. I wish I'd taken piano or guitar. Try to pick that up later, and I was just so busy. I guess somebody went, no way. <laughs> Me personally, I wish I had taken up martial arts earlier, not later. Looking back, I realized I had opportunities, more opportunities than I had realized. I had more time than I realized. You know, it's really funny, as a parent, I look at my kids and I go, you just don't get that you have a lot of time. And they come in and go, I'm so busy. I'm tired. I'm thinking, I know, but it only gets worse. 
And you don't want to tell your kids that. You don't want to dishearten them, right? They don't, you don't want them to go out to the world like, I'm expecting the worst. But have you ever looked back at your life and saw today what you didn't see then and wish you could have? You realize that there was more you could have done with your time, more you could have learned, more ways you could have interacted with other people, or that you could have done things differently if you could have known then what you know now. That's a common phrase. If I'd only known then what I know now. We do that quite regularly. We look back and we say, I wish. A gift that I wish I had right now is that I wish that I had the ability to see my life now, right at this very moment, as I will see my life as my life is drawing to an end. For I know that when I am at death's door and I'm looking back over my life, and hopefully it's beyond 80, I'm looking back at my life going, what did I accomplish? What did I do? I wish I could see today what I will see then. That I'll have that perspective. It's not easy. At that point, the realities of life become a little bit more clear. We realize just truly how fleeting life is. This mortal body, this time on earth. Again, we know about forever, right? As we're laying in bed ill, going, I wish I could get up. As we're waiting to do something exciting, as we're waiting in the airport for the airplane to take off. We know what forever is like, but truly that's such a small part of forever. And we get to that point in our lives when we look back and we realize just how fleeting life is. And we ask ourselves, were my accomplishments truly meaningful or were they, were they merely for myself? So don't lose heart, Paul says. Even though the outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. You are being remade. Even through the, the boring parts of life, even through the difficulties of life, you are being renewed. The outer, of course, is our bodies, our existence here on earth. But we know that what is forever is the inner, our spirit and our soul, that which lasts forever, that which deserves our attention. If we could have that focus today, to be able to see as we will see, to have that perspective that we will have, what does that affect about us today? How does that affect how we live? I'll be honest with you, I like rewards. I like receiving the recognition for my accomplishments. I don't necessarily want it up on banners and I don't want a lot of pomp and circumstance, but I like being recognized for my accomplishments. If I asked you right now who likes that, only a couple of hands will go up like this, I don't want to be that brain. But truthfully, we are all like that. We all want to be recognized. When we do something kind for somebody else, we expect kindness in return, don't we? When we go out of our way to take care of somebody else, we at least want to thank you or recognition that we did something. When we love our spouse, we expect to get love back. When we're nice to our kids and wake them up in a good way, we expect them to wake up in a good mood. Right? Right? Sitting there no. We all want to be recognized for what we do. We want people to be able to appreciate what we do. Who here doesn't? Again, we might not want to have, some might want some big flashy thank you, and that's okay. Sometimes you deserve that. But most of us just want to be recognized for what we do. To that end, we strive to do what we can. We strive to do our part for the bigger picture. And we all have a part in that bigger picture. There will be a day when we all gather around that throne. When this world has passed and we are all in heaven together around the throne of God. When we will see very clearly just how short life is. And we will see how infinite life with God is. On that day, how will you be remembered? How will I be remembered? Will anyone come to us and thank us for the work that we did that brought them and others to eternal life? Or will people ask us why we were so concerned about our own comfort? 
Will someone come to you or to me and say how well we cared for others and how well we continued to find ways to reach out to those around us? Or will we, will we be known as a congregation more concerned about what works are good for us? A congregation that spent more time debating with each other about the internal things rather than looking out to see how God has called us to serve. On that day when the things of this world have completely faded away and all that is left is a memory, what will our memories be? What will the memories be of those around us and affected by us be? We're here only for a short time. For this slight momentary affliction, Paul goes on to say, is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Yes, at times we are uncomfortable. And at times, we are afflicted. And yes, at times, life is extremely painful. But take heart. For we are being prepared for glory. Paul says, the weight of eternal glory. Take heart and know. Take heart and know that what can be seen is merely temporary. That which we struggle with is merely temporary. But that which is hidden from our view, that is eternal. There is hope. There is something to look forward to. Paul goes on to say, For we know that if this eternal tent that we live in, uh, this early tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have God's promise that there is meaning and relevance in this life. No matter what it is, no matter where we are, what we are going through, there is meaning and relevance. Many of us struggle because we look at our lives and we ask, how are we relevant any longer? What is our meaning in life? I used to be. I used to do. My life was so much better. I had so much more influence. I had so much more context. I had so much more in my life. And today, I've lost so very much. Today, my life is so very different. But we're told that we have relevance, that we have meaning, that we are being prepared for eternal glory. There's purpose in our actions. And there's a place where we will all gather one day we will be recognized. One day we will be known. So let us hold fast to that promise. Let us examine what it is that we do and why we do it. And let us act knowing that there is an eternal perspective to our actions. I like a quote that I have from Pierre. Tell Hart of Chardin that says, We are not physical beings having a spiritual experience, but rather we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. I would add to that that we are physical beings having a temporary, or we are spiritual beings having a temporary physical experience. This will pass away. And the glory that is to come, that's something to hold on to. That's something to have hope in. And that should hope and drive us today and give us meaning beyond what we can see. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord, you are eternal. We are finite. It is hard for us to see this. It's hard for us to understand. But open our eyes and our minds and our hearts to understanding this giving us, Lord, the hope that we need to act in ways and to do things that we might not understand that are contrary to our earthly existence. Give us hope that our lives have meaning and help us to recognize, God, who you are in our lives and what you've called us to be no matter where we are. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen.